Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time we're going to be taking this old copy of uh, Moonraker by Ian Fleming, uh, one of the very early James Bond paperbacks. And uh, this one's got quite a few faults, but it is a particularly scarce edition. Um, it's part of what they get, it's not the first, but it is part of what they call the director's edition. And that's because it features this chap here. Now the director in question was Ralph Holmes Vernon Hunt. And he was the nephew of Alan Bott. And Alan Bott was the uh, was the chap who actually founded Pan Books back in 1949. So uh, that is where the connection. And I'm not 100% sure how, but um, he's ended up on the cover of seven specific editions, uh, reprints of these original uh, Fleming books. And perhaps Moonraker is the hardest of these director editions to come across. I've certainly been after one for well, maybe three or four years now, and uh, finally got one at a half decent price. Now, it's not without its faults. So the cover has a little bit, I mean, it's not too bad. It's got some luster. It's predominantly the spine here. So if we look at this, you can see um, it's starting to sort of come away at the top there and is layered and is uh, similar at the bottom. And also the uh, the spine itself has got some sort of mottling on it, which is quite unusual, but I'm hoping that will clean up. And then the top edges, well, they're dusty, but I'm going to sort of give that a dust down with my um, toothbrush in the hope that that sorts that bit out, or at least cleans it up. There's some staining and things on the back, which I hope to be able to polish out. Then inside the actual book itself, it's not too bad this side, but on the back, it is starting to come away. Um, as you can see, look at that. So I'm tempted to be honest, since it's virtually off anyway, is to pull the cover right off and possibly reinforce the spine a little bit at the top bit there and then re-glue it back down once I've sort of, um, I got the book a bit squarer. Um, as you can see as well, at least I hope you can see, it's got a bit of a roll. So this one's obviously been read a few times and it's got that spine roll. Now, in the past, I have had some success with microwaving the book for a short amount of time. So it heats up the glue that's in the spine there and then sort of a bulldog clipping it in place like this and put some weights on it so it straightens it out again. So I might give that a go as well. So anyway, that is what you know, it's going to be the, the task of this video. So uh, sit back, relax, and let's get to it. Okay, then. So a lovely little uh, paperback, this one. And uh, yeah, I was very, very pleased to uh, finally get my hands on one of the fabled director's editions. Um, there are seven in this series, and uh, reputedly Moonraker is the hardest of them all to find. But there are a few others uh, to track down. I've got Goldfinger, and I might have, I'd have to check, but I think I've got Live and Let Die as well. Now, I've made the decision to take the cover right off. So I've just taken my scalpel. I'm going to run it along the edge there, gently sort of detaching the book from the... Uh, the jacket. Quite a delicate old operation. This. I don't want to go all the way through and cut the, uh, the cover in two. That would be a disaster. So I'd rather just do lots and lots of very gentle bits of cutting until uh, until we can free it. This is just a very sharp craft knife you pick up in any sort of art shop. Thank you. 
So that's sort of the back cover detached. Now I need to uh, do a similar process on the front cover here, just to free it from the main block of the pages. This was quite a long, laborious process, so I've um, taken my time and I have uh, just sort of jumped ahead a little bit there, just to the point where I've actually freed the book now from uh, the dust jacket, or the cover as it were, not a jacket, dust jacket, but the cover. And uh, you can see sort of where the spine was, that it really was quite hammered and rolled. And I guess it's just been read, I don't know how many times, maybe six or seven times to get into that state, maybe one or two times less, but you know, it certainly has been read multiple times and uh, that's what's called the spine roll and um, the spine to get sort of creased up as we see it now. Um, a very common fault is the, uh, the tops and tails of the spine starting to curl over like that. And the actual paper that the book is that the cover is printed out of is like multiple le layers and uh, that's what you end up sticking back when you repair um, these damaged spines the book itself not a spot inside i mean there was no pencil marking no like second hand book prices or anything like that definitely the page blocks were foxed and uh, not really a great deal i can do about that um, i did contemplate very fine sandpaper just to sand down the tops and edges of the book but once again i've tried that before with mixed success to be honest so i think for the time being the jury is still out i don't really like it's really abrasive i just use this very soft toothbrush um, and that at least gets the dust off the top of the book um, but certainly you can see it is very very fox it's almost like rust on a car but it's foxing on a book and it's just age um, I mean we have to remember the age of this book it's about 1960 so it's a 60 year old paperback you don't expect it to be in perfect condition um, and when you do well it's going to command a high high price I've seen this director's the director's edition of Moonraker sell for over £70 I didn't pay anything like that for this one it was like mid-twenties which was enough for me I mean that was still a lot of money for one book but considering it is reputed to be one of the hardest to find um, I was quite happy to pay that for it but knowing that I had a bit of a job to clean it up I do always remember a, a friend of mine years ago and we are talking 25-30 years ago but he was collecting the James Bond pan paperbacks and back then he was trying to get every single printing um, absolutely phenomenal really and I just thought he was crazy at the time <laughs> but now I think cool I bet, I bet that paid off um, I wonder if he's still got them he actually emigrated so I uh, don't even think he's in the UK anymore so now back to the main cover so you can see how delicate um, the inside spine is and there is part of the page block has come off and it's all sort of uh, sort of sticking up there so I have decided that I am going to cut off a small strip of paper and create like a spine reinforcement now this doesn't have to be an exact science you don't need to get it to the millimeter just enough um, so that you've got enough paper just to cover the worst of the wear there and that the page block will have something decent to stick back to so it looks like I've got the height just about right now I'm just gonna it's only a single piece of paper so you know you could use slightly thicker sort of cartridgey paper um, I have seen um, uh, sort of book repairers use donor books, and I did think about that as well, but I didn't have anything really to hand without ripping up something quite good. 
Um, I have got a box of, I've got six boxes of spare pans in the loft, but um, which I've been slowly but surely getting up on eBay, but um, I didn't want to take anything out of there. Um, but you could have done that as well. I could have taken a page from a really old or sort of damaged book and used that. But I think this is just going to be, you're not going to see it in the end. Um, you know, I've done it thin enough that it's just going to cover the main bit of the spine there. Um, I don't want any sort of paper poking out the top. So I'm just doing it a bit shorter than the actual height of the book. And uh, that should cover it up nicely. Now I need to do something about all these, um, this bit of loose paper here on the inside cover. So this is where I use my Pritt stick. And this is designed for paper. It's non-toxic very easy to use. Um, I like it because it's almost like a substance, it's almost like wax, except you know you can use something short um, and flat like my screwdriver here. I've got a micro screwdriver and I use that to just scrape a bit off the top of the Pritt stick and then you know, smear it into place and that works a treat. And uh, it is quite easy to get the, uh, the glue exactly where you want it. I don't need much here, it's just enough to keep this bit of paper sort of flat, you know, that, that little remnant of the uh, of the book block, page block, and keep that um, as flat as possible before I put the, uh, the white strip on. And that will strengthen this uh, jacket right up. Now, once a month, I do generally have a, uh, a cleaning video where I show my most recent pickups. And uh, generally speaking, um, they all involve me doing some sort of repair work and cleaning to a lesser degree. But because this one was such a big job, I thought it warranted its own video. Just because uh, I know uh, people do enjoy looking through these uh these repair videos they take lots of tips from it and hopefully it does give you encouragement to have a go yourself it does take quite a lot to muck something like this up to be honest it's not difficult to do and uh, the more you do do the quicker you get and the better you you get at it i'm completely self-taught but i did have many years as a book dealer where i would um you know try and get my stock looking as good as possible of uh, older books and comics and records and these are the sorts of techniques I used uh, to get uh, get my stuff looking as good as possible. And I apply the same techniques when I'm adding books to my collection. Most of my collection has been gone through now, uh, literally book by book, shelf by shelf. But some of the older things, things that I've had for you know decades. Uh, they are still in need of a bit of attention. So it's just a case of me going through and uh, pulling all those ones out and having another session or two. And I will be sure to uh, film those at the same time. So that little strip there has gone on and that's really tightened up that very, very loose spine there. Now, the next thing I need to address is the tops and tails of the spine where You've got those those turned over corners. That was what was really affecting the overall look of this paperback. So once again, uh, as I said, those the cover is is multi layered. It's like three or four bits of paper, ply paper that have come away, and you need to basically glue down each la layer until it's flat again. So you start with the lowest layer, and then you. Uh, Go to the one above it, one above it, until you get eventually to the uh, the outside one. On this one, I think it was only just the one, the one layer which was uh, that had come away. Obviously, because that area is black, um, any sort of um, wear stands out a mile, which is uh, a bit of a shame. But you know that's how it is. But that's the uh, the bottom bit done without too much uh, trouble, to be honest. And then the top, very, very similar affair, where it's a little bit folded over and looking a bit worse for wear. And that's where we need to uh, slip a little slither of glue in and, uh, and get to it. As 
that's lovely. Quite a fiddly little job, but not difficult to do. It's just, you know, fiddly and a bit exacting. One of the great things about Pritt stick is, you know, I'd rather put too much in, squeeze it out, and then, um, you know, you can just sort of you know, wipe it away. Um, it's not a permanent sort of, it's not permanently going to sort of damage your book. You know, you just put in as much as you need, and then you press it down and uh, you're good to go. So that's uh, really cleaned the uh, the spine up quite a bit, and it's feeling much more rigid now that the uh, the spine has been um, reinforced. Now, I'm using a very soft rubber here. Um, as I said, there was no pencil marking inside at all, but when you use a rubber on um, like the little bits of foxing, it can lighten them a little bit, but it won't get rid of them. But it certainly will uh, sort of take off the worst of it. And for that reason alone, I just uh, put the rubber over the very worst pieces inside that front cover there, or the back cover just to see uh, if it does make much of a difference which it does a little bit it's all part of the process now I've got my uh, Mr Sheen out now this is just like a furniture polish now I can't go mental because the book isn't super glossy like a modern paperback but it's not a matte finish like say an old penguin book so um, I can carefully just dab away at the spine which is where that sort of white mottling and aging had come into effect and then um, when the spine's done I should be able to gently then rub it across the front and back covers to get any of that up but obviously the covers is you know what people are going to be looking at so I want to I don't want to go crazy on this I need to be careful there we are so I'm going to get that yellow box the very distinctive pan title box and go over it. As I said, the covers weren't too bad. Um, quite pleased with uh, that. You know, it was. It really was just the spine, but front and back covers weren't too bad. The back cover is very, very common on pan books where they start to age. You see that where under Fleming's picture against the spine there, like the the aging process has kicked in. And the yellow itself can sometimes get blobs and uh, splashes of coffee or something like that. And generally they, they do come up, but you just have to be a little bit careful when you're, uh, when you're actually uh, rubbing the book jacket because uh, go too far or get it too wet and you could be in for trouble. So I'm just um, sort of teasing the book now back into rough shape, but it's looking good. We're, well, we're maybe halfway through the process now. Now this is back to the page block. Now it has got that awful page roll. It's, it's hard to see, but it's definitely there. I've been, all the time I've been you know, so handling the bow, I've been trying to sort of gently bend it and press it back into the correct orientation. But, you know, it is it is quite difficult and it just will keep springing back. So I recently did have a copy of um, Octopussy, the first of that, which I picked up from Australia. And that had the, the worst page roll you've ever seen. I, I so wish I'd filmed it. But I used the putting it into the microwave technique. Um, and it really worked. Now, this has now been in the microwave. So I popped it in for a blast of 15 seconds and then immediately took it back and then started sort of kneading it and pinching it back into shape. And it has actually succeeded. It's not crazy because this is the octopusy one that I did later on was from about 1968. 
this is much earlier so that's 1960 so octopussy had a lot more glue uh, the books were made slightly differently um, at the end of the 60s to when this one was published but it still worked okay I was really pleased at how um, the book seemed to uh, be a bit more supple and willing to uh, go back into the correct sort of position without the roll so I'm just sort of really holding the book tight and trying to just sort of pinch it back in and um, this is also getting the cover creased in the right place so that when I glue it it's going to be spot on um, but once again because I'm going to be using Prit stick I'll be able to adjust it just so it's exactly in the right position certainly not too bad here so I need to glue that spine um, and put glue onto the internal cover and put the two bits together and make it a permanent fixture so once again I'm just using my Pritt stick it's uh, designed for paper products so it's great for this sort of thing I've never felt the need to use some sort of epoxy glue or, or you know a combination of glues to redo a spine. Um, this method has always stood stood well with me. generously uh, glue in the spine as well just a one final glance to make sure it's going on the right way and then uh, on we go now this is just you know basically just tinkering with it a little bit just to make sure it's nice and flush and as close to the spine as possible so it's a really nice tight fit Once again, I'm sort of pinching the book while I'm putting this on. I'm trying to pinch the page block so it's as square as possible. And this is just something if you decide to have a go at this with one of your books, you're just going to need to sort of get a feel for it. Um, I mean, I do make numerous cuts in this video and the whole process probably took about an hour and I've you know basically cut it in half to make it more like a half hour process so do bear that in mind and this wasn't really that complicated a fix but it is one of those ones that's going to require a little bit of patience and then uh, you're going to just uh, need to leave it so now that I've got the book as flat as I can Another thing that I did with my copy of Octopussy, I used a bulldog clip to pinch the book into position. And it proved very, very successful. So I got the book as square as I could, which is exactly what I'm doing now. It's almost like massaging it into place. As you can see, the, uh, the actual repair there is absolutely perfect. Really, really good. It's exactly what I was hoping for. You can't see any sign of the paper that we used to reinforce that spine and the book is now perfectly repaired and ready to be read it should it should we need to so i'm very pleased with that it really is just that last bit of spine roll but it's it's almost out but um what i did with octopusy then was uh once i've microwaved it i bent the glue back into the position as best i could and then I used a bulldog clip to sort of hold it in place. Now I don't want to put that bulldog clip and it's super, uh, super strong this bulldog clip. It really is a very, very strong one. So I don't want to put that directly on the cover. So I'm just wrapping a little bit of paper around it to protect the jacket itself. Like that. Once again, I'm pinching the book into place so it's nice and square. And then I'm popping the, uh, the bulldog clip on. Now, to be honest, that bulldog clip needs to be on there now, keeping the book in that position for a few days. Now, 
Now imagine a few days have gone by. <laughs> they certainly hadn't when I was filming this. Um, but as we speak, my book is still bulldog clamped up, so it's going to preserve its shape. And then sort of the final bit, I um, just to keep it in position. Um, and if yours is particularly bad, you might want to consider doing this as well. Is yeah, this is a big house brick. Now that house brick has just been wrapped in paper, so it's super heavy. And I use this as a big old heavy weight, and that will keep the book nice and flat and in position. So what you could do, you could get the book, the page block nice and sharp, put that spine up against a wall, up against a wall, so it's nice and flat, then put the weight on it to keep it in position, and then leave it like that for another week or so. So uh, just good little trick there. If you've got an old house book lying around, give it a wash, wrap it up in a few bits of paper or even some cloth, which I intend to do on my one, and it will make all the difference. But overall, as you can see, that copy is looking fantastic. Great stuff.